Today we're going to talk about the urticating hairs of tarantulas, so let's get started. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name's Richard, and if you're new to the channel, I make videos about tarantulas, scorpions, and other inverts. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now we all know that some species of tarantulas have urticating hairs, but when it comes to exactly which species have exactly what type of urticating hairs, it seems a lot of us are confused on that topic. So today we're gonna dive deep into setae. Not literally though, because that would be very itchy. There are two types of tarantulas in the world, divided up depending on what part of the world you find them. There are New World tarantulas that can be found in North, Central, and South America, sometimes referred to as bird eaters. And there are Old World tarantulas that can be found in the rest of the world, usually referred to as baboons. Old World tarantulas, like those found in Africa and throughout Asia, for the most part lack any urticating hairs, though they do seem to possess much stronger venom. There can always be exceptions to these rules, especially as tarantulas have not nearly been studied as thoroughly scientifically as they probably should be at this point. Even the assumption that old world tarantulas have stronger venom than new world tarantulas, with the exception of a few species, has not been scientifically proven in all cases. That being said, it is easy to observe that old world tarantulas seem to be more defensive, faster to flee, and more apt to show a threat pose in an attempt to intimidate compared to new world species. New world tarantulas are not as defensive, but they do possess urticating setae that they will kick up in the air when they feel threatened. Around 90% of New World species have these hairs, though some species, like Salmopias, do not possess them. Urticating setae can be found on the femora of the pedipalps, or more commonly, on the abdomen. Different types of tarantulas have different setae, or combinations of setae, located on different areas of the abdomen. It is said that species of tarantulas in the Gramistola, Lossiodora, or Acanthoscuria genera possess the most urticating setae on their bodies, but to different levels of effectiveness. The urticating setae of Gramistola species are typically harmless to humans and not very irritating at all, though tarantulas in the Acanthoscuria genus can have hairs that are much more irritating and can cause severe itching and rashes, while specimens within the genus of Theraphosa are known to have the most serious urticating setae that can cause not only itching and rash, but burning sensations, bumps, or blisters that can last for weeks, as well as the possibility of causing breathing issues, especially if the hairs are inhaled. These hairs are not just kicked into the air in self-defense, but they can also be used passively by some species and are transferred onto the webbing of their burrows and surrounding areas, as well as onto their egg sacs in an attempt to ward off predators. And counter to the common belief that one can build up a tolerance or immunity to hairs like can happen with medicine or alcohol, the reaction to urticating hairs can become worse the more you are exposed to them. Some hairs you found slightly irritating in the beginning can become extremely uncomfortable after years of repeated contact, leading some people to no longer even be able to stay in the same room as some of their favorite species that they have kept for decades because the discomfort has become so intolerable. That is why it is important and even imperative to be careful when rehousing or interacting with your tarantulas and take precautions like wearing gloves, eye protection, and even long sleeves when there is a chance you can come in contact with these setae. Being macho and saying they do not bother you now may be true, but after years of that mindset, you may realize your resistance has turned into a sensitivity that could make keeping some of your favorite tarantulas very uncomfortable or even impossible. While researching tarantulas, it is common to come across descriptions of species stating different types of urticating hairs that use the numbers 1 through 6, though they usually go into no further detail about what this means or what the differences are between the different types. In fact, there are actually seven different types, and some species have two different types of urticating setae. So today we're going to break down the different types of hairs and explain what kind of tarantulas possess them. Top 
type 1 hair. These hairs are about 0.2 to 0.6 millimeters and are embedded into the skin by a penetrating tip. They are found on many species of tarantula except for the Gramistola species. They are also the only type of urticating hair possessed by the Nandu carponius, the P. amazonicus, and Vitalius species. These hairs are not just effective when kicked into the air, but these tarantulas will also kick them onto their webbing and around their burrows, as they are effective in quickly warding off creatures that come in contact with them. Type 2 hairs are a little larger, measuring between 0.5 to 1.5 millimeters and are also embedded with a penetrating tip. This type of hair is exclusive to Avicularia species, Pachytopelma species, and Iridopelma species. They are not kicked into the air as a cloud, rather they are transferred by direct contact. So when your Avicularia is rubbing its abdomen on you, it may look cute and you may think it's a sign of affection, but it's actually trying to rub urticating hairs on you. Type 3 hairs are around the same size as type 2, measuring 0.3 millimeters to 1.8 millimeters, and are also embedded by a penetrating tip. These are known as the most effective and most irritating type of urticating hairs to vertebrates and invertebrates alike. They can be found on species in genera like Nandu, Megafapelma, Brachypelma, among many others. Type 4. These hairs are much finer than the previous urticating setae, usually measured around 0.06 to 0.22 millimeters. And like most setae, are embedded by a penetrating tip. They are most commonly found on many species, like those in the Gramistola and Euthalus genus. They are very irritating to small animals, but are among the least irritating to humans. So if you are sensitive to urticating hairs, Gramistola and Euthalus tarantulas are probably a very good choice for you. Type 5. These are extremely short and light compared to other types of urticating setae, and instead of penetrating the skin, they are embedded in hair follicles. Also, unlike the previous setae, these hairs are found on the femora of the pedipalps and are exclusive to the Ephibopus species. Type 6 hairs are relatively rare and are found in the Hemerhaga species and are also embedded in the hair follicle. Type 7. These are the most recently discovered urticating hairs, described by Galvis and Perez Miles in 2016. They are exclusive to the Colombian tarantula in the Concuamu genus, and are different from other types of hairs, as they have a small patch of reverse barbs near the tip and small main barbs extending the length of the setae. Even though most people are worried about the venom of the tarantula, concern and attention should really be paid to urticating hairs. This seemingly innocuous defense mechanism is often overlooked or even joked about among tarantula keepers. But if you have ever been on the receiving end of urticating setae, you know how irritating the reaction can be. This is why it is very important to not place tarantulas on your face, have them around your eyes or nose, and why you definitely should never put one in your mouth, no matter how cool you think the picture may be and how many likes you may get on Instagram. Urticating hairs in the eye can cause temporary blindness and may require medical treatment. Getting hairs in your mouth or throat could cause swelling, making it hard to talk, eat, or even breathe. And the consequences could be even worse if they get into your lungs. In all my years of keeping tarantulas, I have found no home remedy that can alleviate the discomfort of getting these hairs on your skin. I have tried ice packs, warm compresses, calamine lotion, duct tape, hot candle wax, and about any other suggestions you can commonly find on message boards and Facebook groups. The only thing to provide the slightest relief has been ibuprofen, Benadryl, and a prescription steroid anti-itch cream my doctor prescribed once. For the most part, you just have to suffer through the discomfort and wait for your body to heal itself. It is best to avoid getting hair on your skin in the first place by taking preventative measures like wearing gloves, long sleeves, eye protection, and even a face mask depending on the species that you're interacting with and your sensitivity. Now I know it sounds silly to be concerned about hair, but if you've gotten some of that urticating setae on your skin, you know how serious it can be. 
and it's only gonna get worse the longer you let yourself be exposed to it. Now don't let this scare you or turn you off to the hobby, because keeping tarantulas is amazing. Just don't fall into that macho mindset and throw caution in the wind and not care about hairs at all. Because as I mentioned, they can be extremely uncomfortable and potentially dangerous if they get in your eyes, nose, or mouth. As long as you wear gloves and long sleeves and a mask and eye protection if needed, you're not gonna have any issues. Now, if you wanna watch my video where I talk to Coyote Peterson about the effects of venom on the human body, just click this video right here. And if you wanna be entertained with some awesome feeding videos, just watch this playlist right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>